Hello everyone, my name is Tepo and welcome back to Native Engineering. Today we are doing an exercise on joint cycle, power matches and six. It's an exercise that I've taken from a question paper that was written on April 2019. It's question number two and it reads as follows. The cylinder volume of a single cylinder engine operating on the dual cycle principle at 0 0.045 cubic meters. The initial temperature of compression is 31 degrees Celsius. The adiabatic volumetric compression ratio is 9 is to 1. The constant volume heat addition pressure ratio is 1.5 is to 1. And the constant pressure heat addition volumetric ratio is 2.4 is to 1. Assume the specific heat capacity as con at constant pressure for A as 1.008 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and the specific heat capacity at constant volume for A as 0 0.72 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and calculate the following quantities and those are equations. Question number one. Missing volumes at the principal points in cubic meters. Question number two. Adiabatic volumetric expansion ratio. Question number three. Value of gamma. Question number four. Missing absolute temperatures at the principal points. And the last question, which is question number five, they say heat received in kilojoules per kg. And this is the information that we are given. We are given T1, and then we are told about the, they said it's the cylinder volume. A cylinder volume will be from here to here. It includes the swept volume and the currency volume, which will be equals to V1. And we know V1 and V5, they are the same. Therefore, we're going to put it here, V1 and V5, which is this pressure. And then they gave us the specific heat capacity at constant pressure. They gave us the specific heat capacity at constant volume. And then they say the constant volume heat addition, constant volume heat addition, you know, it's this stage. They say pressure ratio they gave us. The pressure ratio is for this stage, since they said at the constant volume heat addition and then they give us another one they say and the constant pressure heat addition constant pressure heat addition is this one and then they give us what the volumetric ratio the volumetric ratio that they give that, that they are giving us it's one it's for three and four that's the volumetric ratio that they are giving us and we are going to write it like this and the volume the pressure ratio we are going to write it like this and we go to question number one which is 2.1 they say missing volumes at the principal points we have three spaces that needs to be filled with volumes we will start obviously with what we have the compression ratio it gave us compression ratio. I didn't write it. Compression ratio is V1 divided by V2. They gave us this. It's 9 is to 1. I forgot to write it. So we are going to start with the compression ratio. We know it's V1 divided by V2. Since V1 we have, we have the compression ratio, we are looking for V2. Therefore, we are going to make it the subject of the formula which will say V1 times 9, which will be our V1, 0 0.045 times 9, which will give us our V2 as, the value of V2 as 0 0.05 cubic meters. And we are going to put it here, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. 0 0.005 I'm sorry about that it's cubic meters and we know V2 it's equals to V3 meaning V3 is also 0 0.005 we are only left with V4 we go to the information that we are given and look for 
and information that will link us to v4 we have it it is v4 divided by v3 we are given the ratio we have v3 just calculated so we can use this one v4 divided by v3 it's equals to 2.4 v4 it's equals to v3 times 2.4 which will be our v3 it's 0 0.005 times 2.4 which will give us the value of v4 as 0 0.012 cubic meters and then we put it here 0 0.012 and then we are done with question number one. Question number two, they say, adiabatic volumetric expansion. Volumetric expansion. This is question number two. We know will be from four to five. That's where the expansion take place. And we are going to say the expansion ratio is equals to they said volumetric expansion, which will be V5 divided by v4 v5 it's equals to 0 0.045 divided by v4 it's 0 0.012 which will give us our volumetric expansion i will write it okay, i'll write it here our volumetric expansion is 3.75 is to 1 this is our volumetric expansion. And then we go to question number three. We say value of gamma 2.3. Going to write it here. Value of gamma. We know gamma is equals to CP divided by C V. What's the value of our CP? 1.008. C V 0.72, which would give us 1.4. That's our gamma. And then we go to question number four. They say, missing absolute temperatures at the principal points. Now we have to fill the space of temperature. We are left with one, two, three, four temperatures that we need to calculate. We'll start with T2. And we're going to calculate T2 using this formula. T2 divided by T1 is equals to V1 divided by V2 raised to gamma minus 1. T2 is equals to, what's the value of T1? It's 304. This is the compression ratio which is 9 raised to gamma which is 1.4 our gamma let's put it here 1.4 minus 1 and this will give us our value of T2 as 732.1 Kelvin and then we go to Oh, first we put it here and then from here we are going to calculate for our T3 we are going to use the formula P 2V2 divided by T2 it's equals to P3 times say yeah times V3 divided by T3 just leave it like this and then it's 2 and 3 2 and three here combustion is taking place at constant volume therefore we can we cancel these two we are looking for this therefore we make it the subject of the formula t2 times p3 divided by p2 we are having this formula this ratio which will be equals to this therefore we can say the value of T2 is 732.1 times this, which is 1.5. 1.5. And this will give us the value of T3 as 
is equal to 1, 5 Kelvin. We write it. 0.15 Kelvin. And then from here, we want to calculate for the value of T4. To calculate T4, we are going to use P3 V3 divided by T3. It's equals to P4 times V4 divided by T4. It's 3 and 4. It takes place at constant pressure. Therefore, we, my, we cancel out these two. We are looking for T4. We make it the subject of the formula. T4, it equals to T3 times V4 divided by V3. This T3, we have 1098.15 times our V4, which we can simply substitute this by this since we have v4 divided by v3 and this is v4 divided by v3 we can just say 2.4 instead of putting the actual values and then we are going to get our answer for t4 as 2635.56 kelvin and then we record 2635.56 Kelvin. And then from here we want to get the value of T5. To get T5, we are going to use T4 divided by T5. It equals to V4 divided by V5 raised to gamma minus one. We are looking for this, we make it the subject of the formula, and we are going to get 2635.56 times our V4 divided by V5. We do not have it, we do not have its ratio here. So we are going to put the actual values. Here it's 0 0.012, which is V4, and our V5 is 0 0.045 raised to 1.4 which is gamma minus 1 and then we get our T5 as 1553 divided by 0.318 Kelvin we put it here 1553.318 Kelvin and we are done with this with this question we move to the next one where they say heat received in kilojoules per kg. Remember, in a joule cycle, heat is received at the first phase of combustion and at the second phase of combustion, meaning that the total heat received, or let's say heat in total, heat in total will be equals to the heat received heat in from 2 to 3 plus the heat in from 3 to 4 2 to 3 let me rewrite these numbers is 2 it's 3 and here it's 4 heat received from 2 to 3 and heat received from 3 to 4. That will give us the total heat energy that is received in the system. So first, let's calculate these ones. Q in 2 to 3. It's M times... It's M times the specific capacity. 2 to 3. Heat is received at constant volume, which means... We are going to use the specific capacity at constant volume times the change in temperature will be T3 minus T2. 
T3 minus T2. And we are going to substitute, we use 1 kg. They said they want it in kilojoules per kg. We use 1 kg times the specific capacity constant volume, which will be 0 0.72, times the change in temperature. T3, it's 1098.15 minus T2, 732, let's erase this, 0.1. And this will give us the heat that is received at the first phase of combustion, which is 263.556 kilojoules per kg. It's 1 kg. So it will be per kg. And then let's erase this. We no longer need it. I need the space. Q in. And now we are looking at two, three, two, four. It's M times specific capacity at constant pressure. Combustion here is taking place at constant pressure times the change in temperature, which will be T4 minus T3. One, the specific capacity at constant pressure is 0. Point, it's 1.008 times the change in temperature, it's four, T4 is 263.556 minus T3, which will be 1098.15. And this will give us one five four nine point seven oh nine kilojoules per kg since we are using one kg as our mass and then the total q total which will be this plus this we got that it is one eight one three point two six five kilojoules per kg and that is the total heat energy that will be received remember the way we choose a formula to calculate for the temperature or the volume or the pressure if they are asking you to calculate for it is if you are dealing with or if you are you, you are looking for an information between one and two you are going to use the formulas that we are allowed to use under adiabatic law and if you are dealing with let's say three to four the formulas that we are allowed to use under constant pressure that's how you choose a formula. As long as you have the information that will enable you to use that formula, you are going to use that formula to get what you are looking for. It's not uh, a standard formula that you must always use. Just look at the information that you have and look what you want. And the formula that is going to work for you, that's the formula that you are going to use. I will see you on the next lesson.